CEO of the Hamilton Port Authority. I would like to begin by acknowledging all of the Randall Reef project partners here with us today. So, in, in order, the Honourable Peter Kent, Federal Minister of Environment, the Honourable Jim Bradley, Ontario Minister of Environment, Hamilton Mayor Bob Bertina, Burlington Mayor Rick Goldring, and I'd also like to, uh, to introduce um, Mike Wallace, MP, David Sweet, MP, the Honourable Lisa Raitt, and Councillor Rick Craven. Uh, Rick, you there, thank you. <clears throat> the Randall Reef Sediment Remediation Project is a project to dredge contained 630,000 cubic meters of contaminated sediment in the Hamilton Harbor. The site is a coal tar laced with other persistent toxic substances and represents the largest area of con uh, contaminated sediment on the Canadian side of the Great Lakes. Earlier this fall, we achieved an important milestone when all of the Randall Reef project partners approved their contributions to the updated fund. The next step is an exciting one because it involves a tangible sign of progress. As we speak, and this is true, there are workers out on the barge over at Pier 15, where the new Randall Reef will be created, and they are conducting a pilot project that includes driving steel sheet pilings into the harbor bed. This work is being conducted at a, at a few locations around the perimeter of the planned sediment containment facility. This project will give us an important information about the energy and time required for the installation of the piles. The results will be documented and presented to all bidders for their use in determining their respective bid prices. This is how we intend to move forward carefully, deliberately, with the best information available to make sure the project is done right. In addition to the project partners, the community is excited about this project too. To the people of Hamilton and Burlington and surrounding areas, Randall Reef is one of the final chapters in a remarkable story of environmental revitalization. As a community, we have seen the harbor develop a healthy balance of recreational and economic uh, opportunities. By containing the contamination on Randall Reef, we will be closer than ever to removing Hamilton Harbor from the International Joint Commission's list of Great Lakes toxic hotspots. We will be leaving a legacy of a clean, active harbor for the future generations. On behalf of the Port Authority and my Chairman Mel, it is my pleasure to welcome all of the partners and invite them to share their remarks. Our, our, uh, our first guest will be the Honourable Peter Kent, Federal Minister of Environment and MP for Thornhill, Ontario. Since he has held the environment portfolio, the Minister has shown tremendous leadership in getting the project where it is today. Welcome, Minister Kent, please. Thank you, Bruce. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, bonjour à tous. Uh, Minister Bradley, mayors, uh, parliamentary colleagues, uh, Minister Wright, uh, David Sweet, uh, Mike Wallace. Uh, I, I'm really delighted to be here this morning to share this good news announcement with uh, an unusually large group of partners and, uh, and, and stakeholders. Uh, I don't need to tell anyone here today just how important uh, the Great Lakes are as a, as a source of drinking water, uh, as a resource for agriculture, a transportation corridor, uh, not to mention home to around uh, 150 species of fish and uh, fully 3,500 plant and animal species. As the largest group of uh, freshwater lakes on the planet, these lakes sustain billions of dollars of trade between the United States and Canada every year. And of course, here in Hamilton Harbor, uh, the economic activity and the potential for future growth are tremendous. This port handles the largest volume of cargo and shipping traffic of all Canadian Great Lakes ports. On average, every year, about 700 vessels uh, move more than 12 million metric tons of cargo in and out of this port. So ensuring the long-term economic and environmental viability of Hamilton Harbour is clearly important. But for much of the past century, it was obvious that accumulating toxic pollution was a serious problem. And in 1985, 
Uh, Hamilton Harbour was formally identified as an area of concern under the Canada-United States Great Lakes Water Quality Agreement. Today, I'm delighted to announce uh, $46.3 million in Government of Canada funding to clean up the toxic site known as Randall Reef, um, the largest and, uh, as you just heard from Bruce, most severely contaminated uh, site on the Canadian side of the Great Lakes. More than 600,000 cubic meters of polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons and some heavy metals uh, spread over an area um, plus or minus roughly the size of equivalent to about 120 football fields. The federal contribution represents one-third of the funding for this eight-year $138.9 million project. L'assainissement du récif Randall constitue la dernière étape majeure du processus de restauration du port de Hamilton et de sa radiation de la liste des secteurs préoccupants. Ce projet permettra d'améliorer la qualité de l'eau et de réduire les niveaux de contaminants dans les organismes aquatiques. Il permettra aussi la création d'une soixantaine d'emplois par année dans la collectivité locale. This is the last major step in the process to restore Hamilton Harbor and remove it from the list of areas of concern. This project will improve water quality and reduce contaminant levels uh, in aquatic life organisms. And it will create, uh, as I said, roughly uh, 60 jobs per year in the local community. And once complete, uh, it will remove current restrictions on navigation and generate greater economic returns through the creation of valuable port lands. As project leader, uh, the Government of Canada looks forward to working in close collaboration with all of our partners, the City of Hamilton, the Hamilton Port Authority, U.S. Steel Canada, the City of Burlington, the Regional Municipality of Halton, and of course, Ontario's Minister and Ministry of the Environment. Today's announcement supports the Government of Canada's commitments uh, under the recently updated Canada-United States Great Lakes Water Quality Agreement. Remediation of Randall Reef, of course, is only one of many investments uh, the Government of Canada is making to address high-priority water issues on the Great Lakes. Uh, in fact, we've already invested significantly more than half a billion dollars for wastewater infrastructure in the Great Lakes Basin uh, since 2007. In Hamilton Harbour, uh, that includes improvements in wastewater management and restoration of uh, the 376 hectare of wildlife and fish habitat uh, in the harbor and in the adjacent lands known as Coots Paradise. We have also, in budget 2011, allotted $16 million to deal with nutrient loading and algae in the Great Lakes, and in budget 2012, uh, similar funding to tackle invasive species such as the Asian carp. So, ladies and gentlemen, all of this underscores uh, the Government of Canada's dedication to cleaner and safer water right across the country. And I look forward to the positive results that our partnership will deliver for Hamilton Harbour and the surrounding communities in the years to come. Thank you. Merci. Left my notes up here, sorry. <clears throat> Next, I would like to call on the Honourable Jim Bradley, Ontario Minister of Environment and MPP for St. Catharines. In the environment, portfolio since 2011, Minister Bradley has been instrumental in ensuring the province's voice among the Randall Reef partners. Welcome, please, Mr. Uh, Minister Bradley. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Bruce, and uh, hello to everybody this morning at uh, this very good news announcement. I'm delighted to be here today with, uh, in Hamilton with uh, Peter Kent, the Minister of the Environment of Canada. We have had many conversations about the Great Lakes and many conversations about uh, matters of uh, mutual concern to both of us, and it's a delight to be working with the federal government and local individuals and uh, entities as well on projects of this kind. Good to be here with my old friend Bob Bertina, Mayor of Hamilton, and with uh, Rick Golding, the Mayor of Burlington, and our federal representation that is here today and have been introduced already. Ontario is indeed pleased to be a partner in this project with the federal government, the region of Halton, the cities of Hamilton-Burlington, the Hamilton Port Authority, and of course U.S. Steel. 
Dredging and capping contaminated sediment in Randall Reef is one of the last major actions needed to be completed for the cleanup of the Hamilton Harbor area of concern. These sediments are contaminated with uh, a coal tar, as I called it. I think uh, the federal minister referred to it as polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. <laughs> I was having a hard time for that, so I used coal tar in my... <laughs> Shipping and waves disturb the sediments, moving them around the harbor, and this project will stop these contaminated sediments from continuing to pollute the bay's ecosystem. How big a job is this? Well, the volume of sediment is equivalent to filling Copps Coliseum from floor to ceiling three times over. Our government has committed $46.3 million to the Randall Reef Project. That, of course, is one-third of the cost. The Randall Reef Project will improve water quality, fish habitat, and the recreational uses of this beautiful body of water. A cleaner, healthier harbor will help increase property values, it will encourage investment in business, and bring new jobs to Hamilton and Burlington. Now, way back in 1984, Ministry of the Environment scientists undertook a series of investigations into the water and the sediment problems in Hamilton Harbor. It may not surprise anyone here to hear that uh, their report did not contain much good news. Wetlands were disappearing, water quality was poor, there were restrictions on swimming and the eating of fish. Sediments were contaminated with carcinogenic compounds. High levels of phosphorus were causing unsightly algae growth along the shoreline. Since then, much effort has resulted in some positive changes. In 1993, Ontario put regulations in place to control direct discharges into Ontario's lakes and rivers. Local industries responded to the new legislative requirements by investing millions to upgrade their wastewater treatment facilities. Upgrades to the three local municipal wastewater treatment plants have also reduced the amount of phosphorus going into the harbour and helped improve the water quality. There's also been significant progress in restoring 470 hectares of fish and wildlife habitat in the harbour and more than 15 kilometres of shoreline habitat. I want to commend the efforts of the Bay Area Restoration Council and all the people involved in the Hamilton Harbor Remedial Action Plan, as well as many other partners for their ongoing work. The efforts of local citizens have helped make this cleanup, in fact, a reality. I want to recognize the contribution of my Queen's Park colleague, Ted McMeekin. He has been a tireless advocate for this cleanup project. Water quality is improving and native plant species along with the uh, waterfowl, are returning to Coots Paradise. More shoreline is now accessible to the public with parks and trails that let people reconnect with the lake. I'm pleased to say that today, we're taking another significant step forward on cleaning up this Great Lakes hotspot. Ontario has made the Great Lakes an environmental priority. We have just released Ontario's Great Lakes strategy, which provides a roadmap to guide our future actions on protecting and restoring the lakes. Our government introduced the Great Lakes Guardian Community Fund that is helping people take action to improve their corner of the Great Lakes. Locally, the fund is supporting the Clean Up, Green Up event in Burlington, engaging the community in planting trees, naturalizing the shoreline, and improving the beachfront. We are making progress and it's a fine moment standing here at the Canada Centre for Inland Waters, signaling that work is beginning on the Randall Reef. This project is a critical step forward in protecting and restoring the Great Lakes. We look forward to further work with the federal government and other partners through a new Canada-Ontario Agreement on the Great Lakes, helping ensure they are drinkable, swimmable, and fishable now and for many generations to come. Thank you very much. Uh, now I'd like to call up uh, Hamilton Mayor Bob Bertina, a champion for a clean and accessible Hamilton Harbour. And we are all very grateful for the Mayor's time and, per and perseverance in moving this project forward at the local level. And I can attest to all of the meetings that I've had with him. Thank you, Bruce.
Thanks, Bruce. Uh, honorable ministers, uh, Canton Bradley, Mayor Goldring, special guests, and ladies and gentlemen. Now is the winter of our discontent, <laughs> made glorious summer by this sum of money. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's not uh, a cheap thing to do a project like this, and it took um, a lot of work by a lot of people, and what almost surprised me, I guess, in the negotiations and conversations that we've had over the past many months is how much uh, the ministers were aware of Hamilton and its situation. Uh, of course, the uh, toxic nature of, of the harbor, toxic hotspot, is on lots of people's um, uh, minds. But I, I was touched by the, the passion that existed to see that this was cleaned up and that we would get to a place where we could finally have this day. And of course, already we have work that's taking place in the harbor as we speak. So the story begins uh, 11,000 years ago when the glaciers retreat. I, I love telling this story, and I'm going to do it again because it's not very long. <laughs> when what we were left with a destiny uh, that included a wonderful harbor, a safe harbor, uh, a lot of limestone, uh, and uh, those two things together uh, brought forward the industrial age in the 1850s. So for most of the 11,000 years, the, the harbor was in fact a Lake Geneva kind of a place, pristine, beautiful. Uh, industry came. Industry has taken a lot of criticism, but we, as, as much as there is uh, an environmental legacy, the fact is that our city thrived um, McMaster University's graduates, uh, or their tuitions were often paid for by the wages of steel workers, and so many other great benefits that we took from heavy industry. Of course, we've reached a time now when we have to deal with uh, the environmental effects of, of things like heavy industry, but you've heard U.S. Steel has invested over $25 million on the water treatment plant. Uh, to improve the uh, effluence that, that goes into our harbor. And then, of course, our Woodward Avenue uh, improvements uh, that are taking place as well. So all this speaks to a, a very important point in this long history of our harbor. You know, things changed in the 1850s, and now here we are in the 21st century, and we are going to grapple and clean up and remove this, this toxic designation from our harbor. And that's about as important a task, I think, that government officials could possibly take upon themselves. And I know uh, Mayor Goldring and I had many conversations about this, and when we were discussing uh, how to pull all the funding together, and I suggested to Rick, now remember, that on the charts, it's called Burlington Bay, so you got to... <laughs> remember that. <laughs> all right. <laughs> So it's all come together to today. I couldn't be prouder as a, as a mayor, and we will look back on this time, and future generations will, as the time when we grappled with the environmental issues that the industrial age created. But let me assure uh, U.S. Steel and, and all the other heavy industrial components of our great city that we will make our mark in the world, not by getting rid of it all, but by dealing with it in an, in, a, in an intelligent and proper way that shows that we can still manufacture, but in an environment that's clean and progressive. So once again, ministers, uh, Mayor Goldring, for your assistance, we all came together to put this sum of money together, and now we're going to get the job done. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Our final speaker is Mayor Rick Goldring of Burlington. The participation of Burlington and Halton regions reminds us of the importance of this project to water quality throughout Lake Ontario. We appreciate the support and participation of our neighboring communities. Welcome, Mayor Goldring. Well, thank you very much, uh, Bruce, and it's great to be here with uh, our two uh, ministers of the environment and, and Mayor Bertina. I also want to uh, pay special recognition to one of my colleagues that's here with us today, Councillor Rick Craven, who represents the West End of the City of Burlington. 
Uh, as soon as he was aware of this uh, project and how important it was, uh, he uh, was very persistent in advocating to all of us at Burlington City Council and Halton Regional Council the importance of this project to all of us. I also want to make uh, mention of uh, Mike Wallace, who was uh, running for election in January 2006. That was uh, when he got elected, and it was on his campaign material. Uh, Randall Reef had to be dealt with. So, Mike, congratulations to you uh, today as well. Um, I didn't want to make mention of the fact that the, certainly the, uh, the City of Burlington and our, and our colleagues at Halton Regional Council are committed to the Randall Reef cleanup. Not only is the cleanup of our harbor a necessary step in restoring a valuable shared natural resource, but I think we're all here today because we share a common belief that cleaning up the Hamilton Harbor is a joint responsibility and is simply the right thing to do. A large part of the culture of the City of Burlington is our waterfront and preserving our natural environment is something we take very seriously in Burlington. So much so that the city of Burlington made it a priority to maintain a 50-50 split of urban and rural land. We also work closely with our regional partners to put policies and plans in place to protect our natural heritage, such as our waterfront and the Niagara Escarpment. We certainly believe in protecting what's valuable for many generations to come. So joining in the Randall Reef cleanup effort is one of those ways that we are working together with other levels of government to restore the natural beauty and function of our shared waterways. The re remediation of Randall Reef will improve water quality and reduce contaminant levels and will also afford city residents and visitors of Hamilton and Burlington the opportunity to enjoy the natural environment we are fortunate to have in our own backyards. So on behalf of the city of Burlington and the region of Halton, thank you very much to the government of Canada, province of Ontario, U.S. Steel, and the City of Hamilton and Hamilton Port Authority for all coming together for this very, very important project. And just before I close, I just want to make special recognition of John Hall of the Bay Area Restoration Council. Uh, back in the last term of council, John uh, chartered a boat to take a number of members of Burlington City Council around the bay and take it, took us over to Randall Reef to really explain it to us. So, uh, uh, John, uh, your leadership and the leadership of so many other citizens in the community uh, we want to recognize today as well. It's not just the government up here, it's all the citizens that have been pushing hard for this project for many years to come. So congratulations to all involved and thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, I would like to just uh, uh, read out a few notes, if I may, about uh, the Hamilton Port Authority. I got the podium. <laughs> So HPA has been a very strong partner from you know, my day one five years ago and even past that when we have our engineers who have been working on this project for probably over 10 years. Um, Mel Hockrig, our chairman sitting down below here, has been a champion for pushing management forward and I think it's, it's appropriate to recognize his leadership at our board table in his, uh, in, in his words, just get this job done, will you? So thank you, Mel, for all your work. <laughs> HPA is a very proud partner in this. Uh, we take it very seriously, and we're so happy this day has actually happened. Thank you very much. Uh, moving forward, if I may. Uh, Adam. There he is, sorry. Adam's going to come up and take the lead. <laughs> Can we ask that they use the microphone? Yes, yeah, certainly. Minister? Yeah. Uh, I'll start. Uh, minutes for 10. <clears throat> this uh, project, the amount uh, that was required to fund it, has increased by inflation. Are the partners committed if inflation goes up to make sure that they increase their funding? Well, <clears throat> this is a, your point is a good one, and it, uh, and it reminds all of us that when, uh, when we address challenges like this, uh, there is no time like the present to, to pay because costs do increase over time uh, through inflation. Uh, but in the case of the, um, the figure that uh, we have all uh, made our commitment to share this morning, uh, there is a contingency um, uh, buffer within this funding. The engineers have been working on this uh, for literally decades. 
Um, the final uh, engineering studies and the plan uh, have come together with, uh, with a fair amount of precision. As you know, some of the survey work that's being done out in the harbor right now uh, is, uh, is, is finalizing that. So uh, I think all parties are quite confident that the, uh, the remediation will be, uh, will be accomplished within, within the funding that, uh, that we've established today. Mr. Uh, Emma Riley from the Hamilton Spectator, is there a target date for completion for the cleanup? Well, it's a, uh, first of all, the, with some of the preliminary works being done now, uh, an environmental assessment will be done by the Canadian Environmental Assessment Agency to ensure that the, the project um, uh, will be accomplished with, uh, with minimal uh, negative impact uh, in the process. And it is, depending on how you count it, an eight or a nine year uh, completion uh, for, the, for the entire project. It's a major project. It, it is a, this is on the equivalent of the Sydney tar ponds in, uh, in Cape Breton. It's complicated by the fact that it's underwater. On another file, uh, the City of Hamilton, our City Council, has sent you a letter. The, the Provincial Environment Minister has sent the same letter on PFOS at the airport. Where is your ministry on that file? Uh, and I've received those communications. We've talked about this also uh, among ourselves at different times uh, uh, with council members and mayors and, uh, and public groups. Um, it, is, uh, it is being uh, considered by the federal government. As you know, uh, the transport has responsibility for, uh, for, for airports. It's a complicated file, but it is being considered, and uh, I hope that we'll have something, uh, something uh, to share information-wise uh, in the near future. Well, there, there are always potential dangers, but the engineers in, uh, in considering uh, and blueprinting this project, uh, we have to remember that the, the material you know, on the bottom of the harbor, uh, for the most part, is, is very heavy. There is a sludge uh, nature to it. Um, the work that is being done, and again, I, I just had a brief update this morning on, on some of the, uh, the work on depths of sediment, uh, how the driving of the, of the steel containment uh, vessel will be, will be accomplished. Um, it, it's not being driven into the, uh, in, into the floor of the harbor uh, with a pile driver, but done through um, a vibration system which will sink it down. Um, uh, I've been assured that, uh, and again, the Canadian Environmental Assessment Agency, when they do the assessment of the, uh, of the project in the coming months, uh, will take a very good look to make sure that there is sediment isn't, isn't stirred up and that there aren't, uh, there aren't uh, collateral negative impacts. But I, I, for the most part, what is down there, and it's a very large area, it's, it's sort of spread itself over, over the years. Um, the containment facility, and the engineers can probably give you greater detail, the containment facility will be built, uh, and then what, uh, what material is outside of the facility will be backloaded, the water will be purified, and it, and it will be capped. But in, environmental concerns uh, will remain a priority throughout the process. Shelley, Dog, CHCH. Does your, does your timeline account for uh, any possible misuse, like any environmental impacts that we're not accounted for before, or is it, is it firm right now, and if anything were to change, it could then expand by two or three years? Well, it, it, I've been assured that, that the project has been designed uh, very thoroughly, that a lot of factors have been taken into account. I mean, unforeseen circumstances uh, are always a possibility, but I think that uh, there, is, uh, there is considerable confidence that the project, uh, once it gets the green light after the environmental assessment, will, will proceed, uh, will proceed uh, fairly, fairly directly. Any other questions on today's events? Great. Let's uh, head out to, uh, to the water area. We can do a little post.